Okay, hi, it's Sue Lloyd, uh, Vice Chair of the ISSB, and I'm joined today by um, our Chair, Emmanuel Faber, recording our podcast following the May board meeting here in London. So it's really great uh, being in London this week. It's you know, particularly special for me as a former IASB board member, being back here in the headquarters of our sister board. Um, and we're really enjoying the opportunity to get to know um, ISB board members um, and more members of staff uh, being here together this week. We also held um, a jurisdictional working group meeting um, earlier this week where we continued our discussions on uh, the, some of the strategic issues around building the global baseline and um, interoperability. We also had a good discussion with that group on um, data quality um, mm. and the work of the NZDPU, um, which was um, uh, a good discussion. And today at our meeting, we discussed um, a, an update to the SASB standards, uh, which reflects the fact that the ISSB is responsible for maintaining and enhancing uh, those standards. But before we get into that, Emmanuel, perhaps you'd like to share with those listening an update on things that have been keeping uh, you busy since our last <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to be here in London uh, with everyone here at um, the headquarters of the foundation as well, meeting staff and, and our colleagues of IASB. Um, well, what kept us busy certainly is uh, the, uh, the finalization of uh, the launch of S1 and S2. We are nearly here. Uh, it's been a, an incredible um, 18 months of uh, work. Um, for, for all of us and we are just around six weeks before we launch them and we are just finalizing all the preparation, the documents, but as well as the full uh, week of launch um, that will be on the back end of, uh, of, of next month. Uh, I, I think it's very meaningful that we are there. Uh, it, it matters because that will be um, formally uh, the presentation of the global baseline for consistent, comparable, comprehensive uh, disclosures uh, on sustainability risks and opportunities for uh, capital markets. And um, we, I, I think I, I would like to say that uh, I'm quite proud of the level of proportionality, um, the, the appropriate uh, level of reliefs, um, practicalities that we have embedded in the standards, um, including, by the way, a lot of um, um, beyond standards work that has been produced uh, through the, the, the board process and, and maybe Sue you would like to elaborate on what these standards next month are going to come with. Okay, sure. So yes, um, in addition to the sort of uh, the, the key deliverables, which is S1 and S2 themselves and the um, industry guidance that accompanies um, S2, We'll also publish other things. So as is usual with a standard produced by the foundation, we will have a basis for conclusions, which explains the sort of reasoning behind what you see in S1 and S2. But we'll also um, produce an, a few other important documents. One due process document that we will publish with the materials is our effects analysis, which goes through the costs and benefits of the standards from the perspective of the board. Um, which is uh, a requirement of our due process. And in addition to that, we are um, publishing some materials which really help with the communication side of things. One is um, a project summary, um, which gives an overview of the requirements in S1 and S2, and also a feedback summary that goes through and, and really comments on the feedback that we receive from our respondents on the exposure drafts and how we've um, responded to that and what you see in S1 and S2. So a whole... Um, suite of materials to really show people how the standards have evolved, how we used your feedback, and um, as well as the, the punchline, the standards themselves ready for use. So the staff are busy getting all of that whole suite of materials ready for publication. Thank you, Sue. And, and yes, it's been a, it, it continues to be a, a busy time. Um, obviously, we are gradually shifting, uh, even as a board beyond the staff, on engaging with um, our stakeholders uh, gradually as we approach the launch of uh, S1 and S2. I've been recently to the US meeting uh, various investor groups, um, business organizations and others. Um, um, one of our, and I, I was with a couple of our board members. Um, uh, one of our ISSB uh, members, Verity, was in Brazil um, lastly. 
um, uh, speaking with investors and companies and regulators. And it's great to hear about the strong support that she heard for uh, S1 and S2 and the uh, ISSB's material. And, and you, Sue, you were at uh, Eurofine. That's right, in Stockholm a few weeks ago. And that was a really great opportunity both to be involved in you know, an official uh, panel along with um, representatives from the SEC in the US, but also um, EFRAG and the Commission and some stakeholders as well, so that was great. Um, but also just being there as part of this enormous community of people, so having meetings with uh, representatives from the investor community, some um, preparers, but also regulators, IOSCO and others, just a really great opportunity to see a lot of people in one place and really uh, fantastic to see the level of interest in our work and people really starting to look forward to you know, the application of the standards and the, and the information that's going to be coming their way. So it was a really good opportunity to really engage with a lot of people. Yeah, and I, I have to say I'm you know, really delighted to see the level of excitement that is growing around the, the launch of S1 and S2. And... Um, Despite that, we've been keep, you know, kept busy as well in building what the next stages are going to be. And maybe you'd like to say a few words about this too again? Yes, so as well as working on the finalization of S1 and S2, we've been busy with another couple of um, documents that have gone out for our stakeholders to provide us with more um, input on. One is very, very closely related to S1 and S2, and that's the, um, the SASB um, methodology exposure draft that we put out for comment um, with a 90-day consultation period. So that's open until the 9th of August. And I say it's related to S1 and S2 because, as you may well know, when you pick up S1 uh, to report on matters beyond climate, we ask people to refer to and consider the SASB standards. So this methodology ED is all about making sure that when people do that, they are sent to use metrics that make sense irrespective of which jurisdiction that you're in. So it's very important um, to support the application of S1. So do take a look at that. And then looking further forward beyond S1 and S2, we've been saying for a while that we were going to consult our stakeholders to see what you think we should work on next. And so we're really pleased to launch our agenda consultation document, which we published on the 4th of May. That's open for comment until the 1st of September, so we really want to hear from you on what you think we should prioritise in terms of building out um, more specific disclosures on sustainability topics beyond our climate, whether you think it's important that we work further on integration and reporting, so really encourage people to get involved in that. To make it easier for you, we've uh, put in place a survey, so you can respond to our request for information using a survey format. Uh, we hope that makes it a bit easier for you to get back to us and we really look forward to um, hearing from you on that. Um, so then maybe talking about this week's board meeting, uh, so a short uh, public board meeting this time, uh, a focused one but an important one. <laughs> um, as I said I think at the start we're responsible for looking after the SASB standards as well and so we had an important discussion today really just to agree that uh, to reflect the um, industry-specific materials that we've included in S2, both in the application guidance, but also the financed emissions additions that we've put into S2, that we make what we call consequential amendments to align the SASB's industry-based materials to incorporate those changes. So you should get the same disclosures on climate and financed emissions, whether you use S2 or whether you use the SASB standard. So really important um, alignment discussion today and great to get the board's approval for that. So that's uh, from me, Emmanuel. Maybe you'd like to uh, give an update on what the month ahead has in store for us. Hmm. Well, what I think the, the, world, you know, the, the month has in store is really S1 and S2, basically. <laughs> ready, nearly ready on shelf uh, for use. Um, as, as soon as um, you know, the second half of this year uh, for early adoption, effective date in 24, um, we are really looking to the continued uh, work with IOSCO towards uh, endorsement um, in, a, in a process and with a date that will be uh, compatible with this 2024 effective uh, date. Um, the, uh, so I guess that's probably what I think our audience should really um, expect from us um, in the store uh, of ISSB next month. Now, other important events, I think, um, 
of course, for us next uh, month. First of all, there will be the first uh, integrated reporting conference on the 12th of June in Frankfurt in our um, chair and vice chair um, office uh, base there. Uh, really exciting to have <coughs> so many speakers uh, around a topic that I think is fundamental um, integrated thinking uh, for uh, what we are doing at ISSB uh, over time uh, and to drive sustainability into the general uh, purpose financial reporting uh, overall. Another element will be a high-level visit of uh, foundation leaders to uh, Beijing um, next month to continue and progress towards the opening of the announced uh, Beijing office, um, hopefully in the course of uh, um, the, the, the summer. Uh, and finally, talking about our main offices, uh, we'll be meeting in uh, Montreal just a week before uh, the launch of S1 and S2 for uh, our board week in, um, in, uh, in June. So with that, um, that concludes today's podcast. Thank you for listening to us. Stay tuned and uh, we'll meet again one way or the other next month. Thank you. For the latest developments from either the International Sustainability Standards Board or the International Accounting Standards Board, make sure to subscribe on the IFRS Foundation website www.ifrs.org If you enjoyed this podcast, please take some time to rate, review and subscribe on your preferred podcast player. Mm -hmm.